Hey, welcome back. We're at Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 9 this morning. And let's listen to this and look at it. By the way, if you listen as I go through, I think you might hear a very, very interesting pattern in the text. Hey, let's read it. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. So there's a very interesting pattern here and a pattern of emphasis that we might, you know, you make a list of things, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that the most important thing are the summaries, usually like, you know, at the very end or something. But in the Hebrew mind, and we see this again and again at different places in the Bible, we'll see a pattern which kind of puts the emphasis in the middle, in the middle of a passage. So it's kind of important to sort of figure out what's going on there. What's the middle? What's the high point? And right here, I think we have this. And there's kind of an A, B, B, A uh, pattern here. And if this seems too complicated, but I still think it's worth looking at. Uh, there's kind of a beginning and there's a major point of emphasis, and then there's kind of a reversal of that and a conclusion. Listen to it again, and I'll point out the parts, okay? The Lord said, I have surely seen, that's the key phrase here, I have surely seen. So this is like part A. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters, for I am aware of their sufferings. Now here's part B, the next part up. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up, this is the middle, this is, right? To bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite, Hittite, and so on. And then we go back to kind of the A again, it's the back to where we started. Verse 9, Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptian, the Egyptians are oppressing them. So it's kind of back where you started. So, so what's the main point of emphasis in this whole passage from verse 7 to 9? The main point of emphasis is God has come down to deliver them. This is the monumental thing. This is the giant piece that's going on here is after these hundreds of years and this increasing, increasing, increasing affliction and oppression, God has been paying extremely close attention. And now, now he's going to intervene. He's coming, he's, he's, intervention's coming out. So he's come down to help them, and then it says he's going to bring them up, kind of down and then up, you see that? And he's going to bring them up to the, the land, the land that he's promised them. So kind of an interesting piece here, just kind of a, a, a little uh, micro lesson here in, in uh, sometimes the Hebrew mindset. You know, they might not, they didn't have highlighters, they didn't have a lot of the punctuation you or I have. The Hebrew really even only had, it doesn't have two cases like we're used to in English and a lot of the Roman Romance languages have a, a capital case and a smaller case. Uh, but Hebrew doesn't have that, at least it didn't then. So you know what, this is just kind of a, a way, a very thoughtful way of putting your emphasis in the clear. And at the very center of this, God has come down to deliver his people. So God is telling Moses that his, his mission, God's mission here is to deliver his people. And he is inviting Moses to participate. Moses, I want you to be a, a key agent here as I deliver these people. What do you say? So that's kind of God's approach here to Moses. And you know, God wants to deliver his people, all people. He wants to deliver these, these, his Hebrews that are under Egyptian bondage there in the delta of the Nile River. And when we think about ourselves today, God wants to deliver us as well. The thing here is that the, the Hebrews there were sort of involuntarily under bondage. They had gone there and, and uh, things had been very different, but now they're kind of being oppressed from external force, what's weird about us, us moderns and postmoderns, or whatever you want to call us, many of us are really under a worldly uh, kind of oppression, but it's it's very much self-imposed. You know, we're under oppression, but we're the ones who are taking the drugs. We're the ones that are putting junk into our minds. We're the ones who are uh, making bricks for this world that is done for, uh, that's under judgment. We're the ones that are 
that are doing nothingness and we're oppressed by it and worn down and crushed down by it. So, but you know what? The good news here is that what? God is glad. He's glad to deliver his people who are under oppression from external affliction. And he's also glad to deliver we who have been under oppression from a kind of an internally self-inflicted oppression too. So God is very generous and very kind. He will help us out of our own messes that we have made. Let's, let's lean on him and let him do it. Let's cooperate with heaven. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.